The main antagonists from Yu-Gi-Oh! are Pegasus, Matic and Bakura. Including fillers, Noah and Darts are also added to the list. And out of all these antagonists that Yu-Gi-Oh! has to offer, is Marik the worst one? Oh, kurva. Now, before all the fans storm the comment section and want to banish me to the Shadow Realm, let me explain myself. Let's start by quickly introducing all the antagonists of Yu-Gi-Oh! Starting with Pegasus. He's a playchild in an adult's body, engaging in nasty tricks just to satisfy his love for the game. He has loads of money, his own island, practically an army, his genius and also the Millennium Eye, which allows him not only to cheat in duels, but also to have the Shadow Realm on his side. No wonder he loses touch with reality. He's crazy and playful because he already has everything. At least it's the first impression. But once you know everything about him, it quickly becomes clear that there's more to him. Beneath that playful facade is a broken man who would do anything to bring back his deceased love, Cynthia. And to achieve that, he would absolutely do everything. He wants to take over Kaiba Corporation to use the Solid Vision technology to see and feel his love again. For this, he even created her as a card. But to take over Kaiba Corporation, he needs the approval of the Big Five and Kaiba's shares. Which won't be easy to get, since Kaiba of course doesn't want to sell and is essentially just a shell with a broken core, searching for himself. And all this is thanks to Yugi. This is where Pegasus genius comes into play. First he gets the current board, the Big Five, on his side. Then he kidnaps Mokuba, who is the only one who knows how to get to Kaiba's shares. To persuade the Big Five, Pegasus must defeat Yugi in a duel to make the name of Duel Monsters attractive again after Yugi's victory over Kaiba. To persuade Yugi, Pegasus personally appears in a VHS tape to test and lure him in a speed duel. After the duel, he kidnaps Yugi's grandfather, not only as leverage against Yugi, but also so Yugi can feel what it's like to lose a loved one. Everything went wonderfully according to plan, except the ending. The Atem Yugi combo was a bit too much, and everything falls apart. Bakura also gets involved, and so it was the end not just of his plan, but of his life. Fun fact! Pegasus had a successor for Industrial Illusions, namely Yaku Tenma, the main antagonist from the spin-off manga Yu-Gi-Oh! R. It's also revealed there that Pegasus took in orphan children and was actually a pretty decent guy with a heart of gold. Why he had to treat Mokuba in such a weird way, I don't know either. Noah Kaiba, the biological filler son of Gozaburo Kaiba and stepbrother to Seto and Mokuba Kaiba is the main antagonist of probably the worst Yu-Gi-Oh arc. Although the concept itself wasn't bad, just the execution wasn't great. Determined to take over Kaiba Corporation, he committed himself to strict training, only to be severely injured in a car accident at the age of 12, leaving the only way to save him by uploading his memory into the virtual world. From there, he was supposed to become the successor who would eventually receive a new body. But he became a bit too smart and creepy for Papa Kusaburo, and when Seto appeared and showed more promise, that was the end for Noah. Thus, the new antagonist was born. To take revenge, he builds a weird submarine with self-firing weapons and so on, and pulls his stepbrothers into the virtual world, turning it into a game, after all he is only 12 years old, in order to take over Seto's body and live again. He also inexplicably involves the Big Five to make things more interesting, but they just want to cheat, which Noah doesn't like. So he kicks them out, only to cheat himself later, when he uses Mokuba as leverage against Seto. He's only 12 years old after all. And what child wouldn't try to cheat to avoid losing? I know, I would. And did. Then, despite cheating, he loses to Yugi, still tries to take Mokuba's body, but ends up playing the hero and saving everyone. All in the spirit of, I may be bad, but not that bad. Yeah, the whole thing wasn't really great. But he does have a past, a character, and he pursues his plan in a way that fits his character. After all, you have to admit that he has character. He's the 12 year old boy who developed a god complex in the virtual world, but is still a jealous stepbrother with daddy issues. Which sounds pretty annoying. And it was. And that's why I would say it was well executed.
The next filler antagonist is Darts with the Seal of Orichalcus. The last survivor of Atlantis not only had some serious dueling skills, after all, he dueled against Yugi and Seto at the same time and almost defeated them, but also arguably one of the best filler arcs in the entire anime world. Fun facts! In the duel against Seto and Yugi was the one who not only had the highest life points until then, namely 20,000 which was later surpassed in Zexel, but was also at the same time the one with the lowest life points points, which was zero, a record Yugi matched in the same duel. This boss looking guy kept himself pretty fit for being 10,000 years old. He was once the king of Atlantis, but got infected and corrupted by the Orichalco stone. On his mission to destroy the world and start anew, he found strong companions capable of defeating Yugi and his friends. Fun Facts Sato's opponent Alistar is originally named Amelda. However, the dub chose the name Alistar to create a direct connection to the creator of the Unicoslim hexagram, Alistar Crowley, who not only created the symbol, but also frequently used it in his occult sect. Behind darts, there isn't much else. He possesses power as strong as the pharaohs, which isn't good with a corrupted heart, has strong loyal members and consistently corner the heroes in simple duels without having to resort to significant blackmail. Yami Bakura is darkness itself. He has taken possession of poor, innocent Bakura and even without the Millennium Ring, always goes there willingly and can't do anything about it. Bakura is a puppet trapped in Yami Bakura's strings. After all, the Millennium Ring is what his father wanted. And since he died trying to get it, he now wears it. Bakura has a pure soul and even tries to resist on several occasions. Without his actions, Yugi and the others couldn't win against Bakura in Dungeons and Dragons or in the anime's forest duel. Yami Bakura is the ultimate final boss in Yu-Gi-Oh Classic. He is Atom's counterpart. He is the darkness itself who kills Pegasus to get the Millennium Eye who sneaked into a piece of the puzzle, who was always there, never too obvious, and if he was caught, he just came back. Again and again and again. He always kept an eye on events and held his enemies closer than anything else, like a shadow that's always with you. When the time came, he gathered all the items to release Zorg and thus his true self, ushering in the endgame. This led to his final game against the pharaoh himself, where he was close to ending it all and plunging the world into darkness. An adversary who has been there since season 0, orchestrating everything so that he could complete his plan in the end. Even though his plans were thwarted time and time again, and he had to sometimes save his enemies from trouble to advance his schemes, he persevered and defeated not only Exodia, but also all three Egyptian god cards. Fun Facts The confrontation between Bakura the King of Thieves and the Pharaoh's Magician is based on nothing else than the story from the Book of Exodus in the Bible or the Quran. There, Moses stood against the Pharaoh's Magicians to lead the Israelites out of Egypt. Behold, the power of God. Moses was given a staff that could turn into a snake, which then consumed the snakes of the magicians. Just like Bakura with Diabond, who also had a snake that devoured the magician's monsters one after the other. Before I start the comparison, I would like to hear your opinions. Who is your favorite antagonist in Yu-Gi-Oh? Just write it down in the comments, I'm really curious. Let's talk about Marek now. Design wise I like him and as a kid I always thought he was really cool because he seemed so smart and strong. Introduced through the rare hunters, one of his subordinates, wait I need to correct myself, his weakest subordinate just like that defeated Joey in a duel with an Exodia deck. Holy shit how powerful must the boss be then? After Yugi took revenge Marek talked through him in an insanely creepy way. How sick and powerful is that? Well, that was pretty much the highlight, along with the victory he later achieved against Bakura. Since his introduction, it is a steady decline every time he tries something. Let's look at his brilliant master plan for example. Step 1. Gather all three god cards. He already had two and they also managed to find out who had the last card. Step 2. Destroy Yugi with the power of all three god cards and finally get the revenge he's been thirsting for. That would also give him the title of king. Fun Facts Marek's name, or as it is originally called, Malik, comes from the Arabic Malik, which means 
owner or holder. Likely, the name was also influenced by the Arabic title Malik, meaning king. His last name, Ishtar, comes from the Mesopotamian deity of fertility, love, war and sex, Ishtar. Malik's plan was so strange. I mean, the plan itself and the structure was actually well set. But how did he try to implement it? Marik has two god cards and they just got word that Kaiba is in possession of Obelisk, the third god card. Because he has a god card, he's especially dangerous and only someone with another god card can take him on. Good thing Marik has someone in the city who possesses Slifer, another god card. But no, instead of sending him after Kaiba, he sends him after Yugi, who just barely managed to avoid losing his legs. With this duel, Marek intended to finish Yugi off for good. Although he actually wanted to take out Yugi personally with his Ra, and he even arrived in the city when he sent Krillin on Crack after him. So instead of sending Slifer after Kaiba and then going directly to Yugi himself, he sends Slifer after Yugi and then loses it. Instead of getting closer to his plan, he messes up and takes a big step backwards. Maybe he sniffed a bit too much mummy spice? Fun fact! Up until the 1920s, ground mummy powder was a popular ingredient in medicines and was even used as a spice. This practice was based on the belief that the remains of mummies had special healing properties, particularly for bleeding and fractures. It was so popular that it was often faked by using the bodies of executed criminals or corpses from graves. Which brings us to the second point. Marek's brilliant Joey trick. Because Yugi now has Slifer, he's a bit too dangerous for Marek. So he thinks, let's have Joey fight Yugi. And because Yugi with Slifer is so dangerous, he's not allowed to use it in this duel. Why not also ban the Dark Magician and more cards? Why give them a time limit of 40 minutes instead of 5 or 10? I don't know. After all, when there were still 8 minutes left and it was Joey's turn, Marek, controlling Joey, just wanted to do nothing and wait for the time to run out. In this duel, Marek, who was controlling Joey the whole time, would have lost to Yugi again, had Yugi not brought himself down to zero to save his friend. And during the duel, Marik, the great Doflamingo puppeteer, even lost control of Joey now and then. So, is Yugi dead and Slifer back to Marik? Nah, neither Yugi nor Joey died, nor did Marik get Slifer back. This whole thing brought Marik absolutely nothing in the end. But surely in the final rounds, Marik will show what he's made of when he personally gets involved. And this brings us to part 3, which is, in my opinion, the worst part. Marik is a dueling loser. Whether it's with Krillin against Yugi, Joey against Yugi, or himself against Mai, where he only had plot armor because she didn't know Ra's password to summon it, which she wanted to do just for show, even though she could have defeated him without it. We keep hearing from him that a deck with a god card could never lose to someone without one. Then he loses with Slifer to someone without god cards and with the strongest god card to Mai. Mei! The Eno of the Yu-Gi-Oh world! Even Sakura didn't lose to Eno! In the 4-way duel against Joey, Kaiba and Yugi, he's the first to be eliminated. Against Joey, he would have lost again, who just needed to attack, just like in the duel against Mai before. And in the final against Yugi, it was really over. No more blood armor to protect him, that was it. The only thing he really managed to do was defeat Bakura. Even the locator cards were given to him by Odeon. Having a 1 to 6 ratio is anything but good. Sure, 3 and a third of these defeats are thanks to Yugi, the king of cheaters. But not being able to handle Joey is not very impressive for a main antagonist, especially since Kaiba keeps dragging him through the mud. And considering that Pegasus easily dealt with Kaiba and even trapped him in a cart. Then to lose against Mai? Come on! That seriously makes you lose every bit of respect, fear or anything else for him. And let's be real, Marek's control over his rod is as bad as the aim of stormtroopers in Star Wars. Not only was his control of Joey pretty weak, but he also realized he couldn't steer the thing 100% when Kaiba dueled with Ishizu and later with Yugi. And that ridiculous action of hiding the thing behind his back while Joey dueled Odeon. He can't be serious. 
Well, at least he didn't do that in the manga. And not only is his control of his rod lacking, but his banishment to the Shadow Realm seems to be as effective as a water pistol against Godzilla. He banished Mai after luckily winning the duel against her. He banished Joey after luckily winning the duel against him. And both of them just came back out without anyone really needing to rescue them. Even Odeon just woke up after being knocked out by Ra. Sure, he wanted to stab him with his Millennium Rod afterwards, but then didn't do it because he was called to a duel. Seriously, that's the reason. He just had to drop his rod. For real! That's all it would have taken to finish Odeon. In the anime, one might argue that it would have been difficult to dispose Odeon's body or something. But in the manga, he just killed someone to get into the room. Which apparently nobody noticed or the guy isn't missed or anything. Seems he wasn't so popular, brother. And lastly, let's talk about his absolutely evil Yami character. It really makes absolutely no difference. Marik was even somehow more brutal without Yami's control. So, Yami taking over had absolutely no effect on anything. Except that he constantly stuck out his tongue. Marik wanted to get rid of his sister without Yami's influence and he didn't really care about Odeon either. Otherwise, he wouldn't have let him summon the fake Ra, knowing that nobody had survived that before. Sure, then act shocked when Odeon doesn't survive. But if he really cared about his life, he would have let him end the duel as he originally planned. Yeah, Yami Marik at least summoned the Shadow Realm in his duel, which the normal Marik also intended to do in the final rounds. But I even think his old methods are even way more brutal. Everyone hops out of the Shadow Realm like it's a fun short trip. But if you lose your feet to a saw or take a dive because of an anchor, you can't get out so easily. He's not a good and an evil part, but more like an evil and an evil part with his tongue out. And now he no longer wants to kill Yugi and become king, but his new ambition is the total destruction of everything and everyone except himself. So at the end of the day, Marek as an antagonist was more of a flop. His master plan and execution are about as impressive as Gohan's punch against Broly. His two evil sides are about as different as Pikachu and Mewtwo's clone Pikachu. Marek's dueling skills are so mediocre that even Serenity might stand a chance against him. And the lack of complete control over the Millennium Rod just makes Marek look bad. It's really a shame, especially since Marek as a character had so much potential. I absolutely like him as a character, this dark energy of him. But as an opponent... Ah, ah, ah. His past, his design. First this calm and mysterious aura around him and then the complete flip which could have been portrayed brilliantly. But no. Instead, he feels like he loses to anyone who picks up a deck. They definitely could have done much more with him. Marik could have been the bad boy of Yu-Gi-Oh, but instead he's just bad. Compared to Pegasus, who had a solid plan, strong abilities through his eye, which he used precisely, good execution and intense dueling skills, easily defeating even Kaiba, Marek looks absolutely pale. Next to Bakura's long run plan and the ability to constantly advance everything, so he has a plan B, C and D up his sleeve, posing a constant threat to absolutely everyone, Marek's impulsive nature really pales in comparison. Yes, Marek won a duel against him, but at the time, Bakura hadn't used his actual Diabone deck yet. Plus, Bakura's exit after the duel left more of an impression than Marek's victory. Weißt du denn nicht, dass ich die Finsternis bin? You just hear him say that and you just know that he means that and at some point he will get exactly what he wants. Compared to the filler antagonist Darts and Noah, Marek is actually the weakest in execution. Darts has power, his subordinates are formidable and his skills were so intense that it took Yugi and Kaiba together to defeat him. And even afterward, as Leviathan, he was again too powerful. Even the three god cards had trouble with him. Even though Noah is the weakest in terms of power, I find him a better antagonist. He's just the jealous stepbrother. And you feel that throughout the entire arc. Whether he steals Mokuba to get back at Seto or breaks his golden no cheating rule just to not lose to Seto. He fulfills what he's supposed to be while Marek still doesn't know what he really wants to be. Is he evil and evil or good and evil? 
Sure, he blames everything on Marek, but at the end of the day, he was in full control the whole time. Even in the duel between Yugi and Joey, where instead of just defeating Yugi according to the plan, he preferred to wait 8 minutes to kill Joey as well. Bakura without Yami Bakura didn't hurt or kill anyone. But I have to admit, I'm still a fan of him. His character is just too badass. Even though he disappoints as a real threat as an antagonist. But what do you think? Do you agree with me or do you still think that Marek was a success as an antagonist? Write it down in the comments. And okay guys, that's it from this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Here you get to another video, a little theory about Atom being Atom, the god Atom, you know. And you can subscribe like here. Have fun. And thanks for watching of course. And take care my friends. Oh, so nice.